Hey guys, this is Rusty again with Collector Auction, and I am in Roanoke, Virginia for this trip right here. It is right before Christmas, although you guys will see this video probably after Christmas. So I hope everybody's having a good holiday, had a great holiday. But I'm on the road right before Christmas. I'm down in Roanoke, Virginia, as I said. I am stopping off at Big Lick Comics. This is a store. It is a huge store from some of the video that I've seen on it. I think Sticky Goose did a video stop here not, not too long ago, maybe a couple months ago even. And I wanted to stop by and see these guys. I've been hearing things about them. They were a vendor at the Baltimore Comic Con, and I knew about them then. I know that they put on their own Comic Con, whether it's here, down in Roanoke, Virginia, or up in Chantilly, Virginia, which is close to home for me. That I've never been to either one of those. So I had a chance. I'm heading back from West Virginia. I'm stopping by Roanoke on the way. I want to check out the store. I want to see what it's like in there. I want to, hopefully, I'll be able to take some video and share my experience with you. If not, I will hopefully be able to pick up some good books, and I will show you those books after I'm finished. So stay tuned, and I'll be back in a moment.
Okay guys, I hope that you enjoyed the footage that I shot inside of Big Lick Comics down in Roanoke, Virginia. They had a lot of toys, a lot of comics, and they utilized this awfully big space to have a lot of different racks where you could have a lot of wall books. And wall books that were all within arm's length, you could reach out and actually pick up a lot of these books and take a look at them and examine them. And I really like that because, you know, guys, I love to get super high books at really good prices. But to do that, you really got to take the book up close to you. Take a look at that spine. Take a look. Take the book out of the bag with their permission, of course. And examine the book and see if it's something that you want to have in your collection or something you want to work on and maybe get graded and sell. So I really like that part of that store. I it, it had a lot of books and the wall books weren't necessarily all ones that were super top. I want I don't want to say the super high grade keys. There were a lot of more mid-range keys. There was a lot of 70s books in those. There was a whole run of Tomb of Dracula. Well, I shouldn't say a whole run, but a run of Tomb of Dracula that was there. There was some beautiful Silver Age Submariner books that I got to pick up. And I'm going to tell you guys that Big Lick, if you're watching this, if you still have that Submariner number three, I'm going to regret passing on that. I thought that was a really good price you had on it. And I may end up picking that book up the next time I'm down in that area. As I said, I went through the store. You saw the footage. You had a ton of stuff there. It was a fun, really fun place. And the guys that run the store and own it, I don't know much about them. But I've seen them before. Some of those guys were up at the Baltimore Comic Con back in October. And I think they're really, they were really nice and very pleasant to talk to. And... I really enjoyed my time there, and I ended up finding a few books that I wanted to work on. I think these were good prices. I think I can work on them, and I can get some really good value out of these if I get them graded. Okay, so the very first comic that I ended up picking up at Big Lick Comics was this one right here. It is Superman number one. This is the reboot issue in 1987 by John Byrne. John Byrne had just done Superman Man of Steel. It was a six issue miniseries that kind of rebooted Superman's history and then they started fresh with issue number one here and they kind of brought the stories up to date after Man of Steel. Man of Steel was a little bit of a I want to say a year one type of situation with Superman but then they didn't stay with year one they just kind of went back into the future or the present at some point in this here and it but it did take hold of everything that Man of Steel set up. It got rid of a lot of the baggage Superman had had from years prior and kind of started fresh. So this was just beautiful artwork. One of my favorites, I had this in college. Of course, I, had all, I was getting these. I was getting Man of Steel. And I actually own a copy of this that John Byrne signed for me back in the day. He signed on the inside cover right on the splash page down at the bottom. And I don't, it's one of those, I'll never get it graded because I don't want to ever lose being able to see that signature. But when I'm out and I happen to see this issue, I'll take a look at the condition because surprisingly not enough, a book like this does not have a lot of value at a 9.8. I think it's mistakenly so. Maybe it's because it, maybe it was so overprinted. I'm not really sure. But I paid a whole $10 for this. It's probably a little bit much, to be honest with you. Because right now, a 9.8 fair market value only runs about $90. But I didn't buy that really to think of as a resale option. This is one of those that I kind of would just like to have it in my PC. It's not a super expensive book, and it will never be a super expensive CGC. But it is kind of a really cool comic to have. And it's a classic uh, 1987 issue number one here. So it can go wrong with that. And... So I'm super happy to have this. It was a super nice copy. I'm going to stop saying super. No spine ticks. Corners look good. So I'm hoping that this will eventually grade out. We'll get that into CGC at some point. I'm definitely not in a hurry to get this one in. But I will get it into the press. And we'll just make sure I get any ticks that happen to be on there out. And yeah, this will be one that will go into my PC at some point. Okay, so after the Superman book, as I continued looking around the shop, and as I said, I was going through the wall books, all the ones that you saw in the videos that I, that I did, 
I was going through the boxes and what I was looking for at this point because there weren't a lot of books that necessarily jumped out at me that were the classic books that Rusty has to buy. Rusty has to buy Spider-Man 294. You know that. It's just ingrained in me. I, I, I'm always looking out at, for certain books. But that doesn't mean my list is short and what I look for is short. So I'm just kind of keeping my eyes open. I didn't, I'm not a big bin diver and going through type bunch of stuff. I, I really focus on the walls first and then I will dig into the bins a little bit if I can find something of interest. So I'm going through and I ended up only buying from the, from the walls. And what I started doing when I couldn't find those keys that I've been focusing on over the last year, all those books that you've seen me over the last year kind of look for, I started focusing on some other things that I started looking at the condition. And I'm going, okay, I'll have to do a quick search and see what the fair market value on something like this is. Because at that point, I'm looking at certain books and I'm looking at grades. What, or condition I should say. What condition are they? And with a little bit of research and I, in an instance like that, I go to go collect and I just do fair market value. I don't deep dive on it too much. I just want to see what the ballpark fair market value is. And so I ended up pulling this out. This, this was a wall book and this is uh, Alpha Flight number 53. And for anybody who knows, this is the very first Jim Lee cover. And I can't say I'm much of a fan of it, to be honest with you, it's a little, it's a little weird. Wolverine looks pretty good, but regardless of what you think, it is a first cover by Jim Lee, and that that is that makes it a minor key. I only paid four dollars for this, but surprisingly, a book like this is nine point eight will go up for as much as two hundred and thirty dollars right now. That's fair market value, and as I said, I'm looking for super clean spines, no spine ticks, no spine ticks. In fact, there were definitely some books that I normally would have picked up. That I ended up putting back because there was just the minorest, is that even a word? The most minor of spine ticks. And I tried to find the most clean copies I could work with. So I found this 253, I mean, excuse me, issue 53. And we'll get that into the press and we'll get this out at some point. This is a book I definitely bought to resell at some point. Okay, so using that same logic that I did with that Alpha Flight issue. I ended up finding a really nice, amazing Spider-Man. This is issue number 230. It is not a key issue, but it is a really cool cover. John Romita cover and fighting the Juggernaut. Just absolutely just a stunning cover. I remember getting this as a kid and just that, that cover just blew me away. The, the line work that they did on, on, the, on the black and white here. And, of course, going... Knowing how they did that, I mean, it isn't drawn like that. It's If you can see the pattern on the black and white there, it is a zippy, zip tone type of overlay that hides part of the artwork that creates this circular effect that's on, that's on the juggernaut there. And anyway, I always love this cover. It is not a key, but it does command a pretty good number at a really high grade. A 9.8 on something like this will cost about, or will run around $270. Okay, so the last book that I picked up was actually one that was behind the counter. They had a nice display of books behind the counter, and I took my time. It was the last one that I looked at. I did all the walls around the room, and then I finally got to the counter, and I took a look, took some time to look at some books behind there. They had several that I pulled out. They all ended up having a spine tick that just kind of knocked it out of what I wanted to do with it, what I thought I could get out of it if I decide to sell it. But they had one, it's usually always on my want list if it's at a certain price. And I have to look because it is a super hard cover to get a 9-8 on because of the black cover. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this one here. It's a really huge key. It is the very first appearance of Dick Grayson as Nightwing. You've got the origin of Deathstroke. This is a book you've seen on my channel countless times at this point. I keep getting this book. In fact, I've already got at least one or two more in the collection right now that I've already, it's actually in the shop. I've been working on them. And 
Eventually, I'll get these into CGC, but I couldn't pass this one up again. I ended up paying about $70 for this, and the reason I did it was no spine ticks. No spine ticks down through here. It sharp corners. I really want to get a 9.8 out of this for my PC. I've got a 9.6, I've got a 9.4, and I've got a raw copy that's been signed by George Perez and Mark Wolfman. So it's not a book that is unknown in my collection, but I really had trying to get this 9.8 on this. I think if I really, if I can ever get the 9.8 on this, I think I'll work backwards at that point, and I will try to get the rest of the Judas Contract issues as 9.8s. Those books are not super expensive. The rest of them, the, it was the first two issues before this, and then you had the fourth issue being in the Titans Annual, number, number three, I believe. And I'll go working on that. I'll make that a project someday, but I, I, on this one in particular, I'm going to work on this and try to get that 9.8 first, and then I'll work backwards. Unlike what I do in some of my other collections where I, I work on all the issues in a certain run, Dark Knight Returns, Craven's Last Hunt, Wolverine miniseries. This one I'm going to work with this one, the key first, and I'll work with the minor one second. So, great issue right here. Just so you know, a 9.8, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Because, what did I say? One, I want it for my PC is 9.8, then I give you a value of what it is. Well, a value for 9.8 on this runs about $500 currently. So, it's one of those, uh, I might regret of getting that 9.8 but I, I might be tempted to sell it to help pay for part of the part of these orders I'm always saying that I want I want to pay pay for these orders well I do want to pay for these orders but I want also want to retain certain books for the PC so it might be hard on something like this because it is a definitely personal favorite okay so I hope you enjoyed everything today I hope you enjoyed the books that I picked up and I hope you enjoyed the footage from Big Lick Comics if you guys get a chance and are on the road I'd say give them a shot, go in there, see what the, what they have, what you like. They've got a lot of selection. The conditions of the books vary. So you may be looking for books that are just for your PC, and I think you'll find them. I think you'll find really good books for your PC if you're not too much worried about the grade. A lot of the books on the walls were not necessarily all near mint, but the prices are really good. So I think you've got a lot of choice there, which is what I like when I go to my comic shop. You've got... Older books, newer books, you've got graphic novels, you've got toys, lots of Funkos, lots of Funkos. And I probably wish I had spent a little bit more time on there, but I still had a long trip ahead of me to get back to Maryland. But I will look forward to my next trip down to Roanoke and we'll visit Big Lick Comics the next, next time I'm there. So, guys, I'm out of here. If you like today's video, please hit the thumbs up and reach out and give me a comment. What do you think of the books? Are these books that you like for your PC? Uh, who am I kidding? I know you like these books for your PC because I like these books for my PC. So, anyway, take care. I will see you for the next one.